Recording started. Welcome to the Interagency Task Force on Israeli-Arab Issues webinar. Arab Citizen Inclusion and Representation in Mainstream Media and National Conferences. Your moderator for today's program is Makaz Steinman, Executive Director for the Interagency Task Force on Israeli-Arab Issues. Audio cast quality is subject to equipment, available bandwidth, and internet traffic. If you experience unsatisfactory audio quality, please use the telephone dial-in option provided in your confirmation and reminder emails. If you have dialed in, operator assistance is available by pressing zero pound. You can send questions at any time by using the chat window located to the left of the presentation screen. A question and answer session will follow the presentation. During the question and answer session, participants who have called in will be able to queue to speak by pressing pound one, that is pound sign, or the hashtag, followed by the one on your telephone keypad. I will now turn the call over to Mikhail. Please begin. Hi everyone, welcome to the Task Force third webinar in our series on Arab citizens in Israel's public sphere. Our two previous webinars focused on two issues, one on Arab participation in the public sector or the civil service, and a second on the issue of spoken Hebrew proficiency in Arab public schools. Today we want to focus on another aspect of the public sphere, that is um, the aspect of media and professional conferences circuits. Uh, in Israel. At large, Arab citizens remain absent as experts in both, both, um, both these fields. So while issues of diversity and access and representation have risen in relation to employment in Israel and economic development in general, they are still generally outside the scope of broader knowledge and speakers' network. Arab citizens, for their part, also frequently don't know or or don't respond to calls for papers or participation. And this results in Arab, expe in Arab expe experts in their fields to not be seen on stages of conferences as speakers or on the screens as interviewees in, um, uh, and, in, in, on people's televisions. So we're very privileged today to be joined by two experts on these issues. Um, Bayan Majadli, who in her previous capacity was media and diversity consultant at ANU and founded uh, in, that, in that capacity, the um, Arab Speakers Bureau uh, at ANU. Today, Bayani is the co-director of Kol Schut. And our second speaker would be Chasia Chomsky Poat of Sikui, um, who is the co-director of, um, uh, of their shared public space department. Sikui is the Association for the Advancement of Civic Equality in Israel. And we will open with Hasya. Hasya, your um, presentation is open on the screen for everyone. And we will then uh, follow with Bayan. So Hasya, please, welcome. Thank you very much. And as Michal said, my name is Hasya chomsky Porat, And uh, I live in the Galilee, in the north of Israel. We moved in, I moved with my family in 1991 from Tel Aviv into the Galilee. And it's, it's important because only then did I realize that actually uh, we are 50-50% uh, of Arab and Jews in the Galilee. And I started realizing all the differences between the two groups of society. So uh, I started getting involved in uh, various projects and uh, uh, activities in the 90s between Jews and Arabs. And uh, since, uh, especially uh, since uh, after the events of 2000, and I worked in Sikuri since 1904. And as Michal said, I co-managed the Shared Public Space project, which the conference watch is part of, so I'll just say a few words about that. The aim of the Shared Public Space project is to make public spaces in Israel shared by creating an increasing presence and visibility of Arabs and Arabic and Arab culture. And the reason is that they are 21% of the population. They are, uh, by law, they are equal citizens, and Arabic is a formal language. But while, uh, uh, in fact, Arabic is uh, more or less, uh, it's very, very, very little seen in the public spaces or heard, or when it is heard, it is perceived as the enemy language. So we thought that we have to change that. And uh, um, 
specifically in the, uh, in the conferences, which I will get to a little later. Now, um, the barriers that uh, are for this reason, that, that for the fact that Arabs are, uh, do not, are not uh, seen, are usually because it's a politi political tension that, uh, you know, people say that um, this is a Jewish state and uh, sometimes there's also, uh, uh, because they are not seen in many, many places of the public, uh, they're not part of the public spaces, people tend to forget them and there's no motivation is to change anything it's like and also the, the another uh, another reason for the lack of motivation to change is that you know the, the the notion that we are the majority and they should adapt and there's also a myth that all arabs speak hebrew uh, and uh, there is all there is the fear of change we are used to the situation as it is and so uh, why change and there's also the the financial reason that change requ requires funds and it's since it is not on the top of priorities it, it takes time, or uh, we really have to uh, convince people to, uh, or institutions to, to do the effort. And um, the the, very, the the arguments that uh, we use are functional and uh, symbolic. And functional, I mean that since um, uh, the, many of them, as opposed to the myth that all Arabs speak Hebrew. Uh, many of them, especially the older generation, women in villages and children do not speak Hebrew, and they need the information. So um, they, uh, sometimes it's, it's also vital information that can save life, like uh, lives, like medical information and stuff like that. And uh, as I said before, Arabic is a formal language, so it should be seen and heard. And then we move to the symbolic uh, arguments, which is a uh, uh, or motiva of motivation for our acting is that uh, uh, if if you see if an Arab sees uh, like any minority group sees their uh, uh, language and culture in the public spaces, it gives them a sense of belong belonging, and it increases the motivation to become an active and contributing part of society. Uh, we also uh, it is also important for us to do the same on the Jewish side so that the Jews internalize the fact that 20% of the population are Arabs because many times like in Tel Aviv they don't even know or in other places they don't even see Arabs and um, and get them accustomed to the language culture and culture and needs since um, it is uh, research shows that if uh, people go into like a, a mall and they hear Arabic, they usually they, they think that it's uh, something that it, uh, relates to terrorism, and we want to change that and to make it a, a normal everyday part of life. The methods that we use are um, basically taken from the um, uh, uh, methods of the feminist movement. Although, of course, it is completely different because here there's a lot of a very big political strife between the, the Jews and the Arabs of Israel. So we use advocacy. We, turn to, we appeal to the older two uh, institutions and we demand them to provide uh, information and stuff in, our, in, Arabic, in Arabic. And when, we, when it doesn't help, we, we, make, we, go, uh, we have campaigns. But uh, I, I will go into that later when I talk about conferences. And the, the, the fields that we work on are health systems, campuses, public transportation, and uh, media, and uh, conference watch. So um, the, um, the, goal, the goal of the um, uh, the goal of the conference watch, which is I did it as a part of um, the, um, like an umbrella organization, Shuta Futuraka, but now it goes back to we to being only part of Sekui. And it, it, the, it, this, uh, in, in the conference watch, our uh, aim is, or the result that we want to get is uh, to increase participation of Arab experts in public life through participation in conferences as experts without our intervention. The thing is that now uh, Arab speakers are usually, uh, or let's say until we started the project, which is uh, it was in uh, May 19, uh, 2012, uh, it, they were only invited to conferences on Arab subjects. And we want to raise awareness to the fact that there are Arab experts in, in every field. Um, so our, our goal is uh, we want to give them uh, uh, visibility and it increased also their networking and professional chances or opportunities and broaden the perspectives of the organizers 
uh, the steering committees and audiences to all, to, you know, to, to also incorporate uh, the, the specific aspect that every subject has in the Arab society, which is very different. And it's, it's, so we want them to be to invite Arab speakers for, from two uh, um, for two reasons. One of them is to uh, as, as a professional expert in every other in every field, and the other one is also to bring the perspective of Arab society in that specific subject. The barriers, the, the, uh, it doesn't happen now because there are, um, uh, we do it in public conferences, academic and professional mainly, because uh, it's, uh, there's, by law they are, they are supposed to be represented, represented in every public uh, um, event. And um, the, uh, the barriers that, uh, so, and uh, our goals are to have two Arab speakers, new Arab speakers in conferences per month, per month. And we also have to, to uh, we want to also want to, to create, and we are succeeding in a ripple effect. Uh, for example, when we approach uh, um, a conference organizers, we also approach, approach the members in steering committees. Which are which is usually professors in other universities if it's an academic conference, etc. And we want uh, we started uh, seeing it uh, Arab experts from conferences starting uh, being uh, invited to write in uh, in the media, and also networking, which is which results in uh, new um, opportunities for them, professional uh, opportunities. Uh, it is. It doesn't happen naturally because uh, because of the you know like the barriers that we have which, that, that the Jewish and Arab circles, social circles are very separate, and uh, like they are. Uh, I could say parallel, but it's not. So and uh, uh, so people do not know the the like the Jewish professional people not, do not always know that uh, they are Arab uh, experts and. People even uh, uh, even if they know that if, even if, if they have awareness, it, many times they don't even have any awareness that it should be done. And many uh, many times if they do have awareness of, or if we manage to raise their awareness, they don't have a clue where to start, where to start looking for the person, uh, um, the suitable person for the conference. And um, we also know that people uh, tend to invite people they know. So it's like you know, like vicious circles that uh, the same persons appear, the same people appear in, or participate in every conference more or less, in the same in the same specific topic. Topic, and uh, um, uh, another thing is that there's, we also meet a, a sort of like a, a lack of basic and basic understanding that then we we only we approach. Uh, conference organizers, they tell us that the, con the conferences are not in Arabic, and we say, you know, it's not. We are not. We're talking about conferences in Hebrew. There are ex Arab experts. All of them speak Hebrew. They have learned. They, uh, I mean, they, they work in the academia and in the professional organizations in Israel. Professional organizations that speak Hebrew. Sometimes there are uh, even international experts in, in specific areas, but people in Israel do not even know of their existence. So uh, this is, these are the, the, the um, responses that we get that there are no, no experts in this field or that we don't know about them. So uh, our, uh, um, or there's also uh, uh, another phenomenon that they are like talking Arabs. The, the same Arab, is, the same per person is, speaking, is invited to speak in various, in various conferences, in various fields, because we, he is the only, he or she is the only one that uh, they know, that, that people know, and are not afraid that they will, you know, like make um, uh, some political remark or something that, that can be um, not, uh, you know, looked upon very po positively. So as we, as I said before, the, we took our, uh, we, we used the method of, that the feminist mo movement used, which is uh, advocacy. A port, we approach. Um, a conference organizers and steering committees and also various institutions whom we know that are making, are producing a lot of conferences and we remind them of the fact that it has to be done. And then if, if advocacy doesn't work, we, have, we turn to campaigns. We appeal to major speakers like ministers, MPs, journalists, 
uh, and uh, like uh, public, uh, like opinion uh, um, leaders to withdraw their participation in a specific uh, conference if there are no Arab participants. And they, sometimes they do it. Or we ask them to, to, interfere, to interfere and to approach the conference organize, the organizers themselves. And usually if they do it, and, would, and usually they do it, it is uh, very successful because then the, organi the, the organizers cannot refuse. And then we also write articles and post on Facebook, posts on Facebook, and sometimes we... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, ne next slide, please. I forgot to say. So uh, this is the second slide. And um, uh, so which I've just talked about, and I forgot to uh, ask. Okay, we changed it. Okay. So um, the thing is that... Um, um, just a second. Uh, and we also uh, sometimes we manage to uh, have them on uh, like in, on uh, various talk shows where we, where we manage to uh, convince the the moderators to uh, to ask them how come they don't have uh, any Arab participants and usually it, it works it doesn't the, the following uh, um, a conference they'll do usually there, there will be an Arab at least one Arab speaker uh, can we have the next uh, Slide, please. Are you talking about the facts and figures? I'm talking about the third. Yes, the facts and figures. Yes, yes, the third. Okay. Okay. So there is a so like uh, I, I gave here a few numbers, uh, but it is not. Um, it, it's it, it's only partially partially indicative because um, uh, we sometimes it is very difficult to to, to judge uh, which. Conferences already incorporate Arab speakers thanks to our previous, uh, 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 thanks to the fact that we approached them previously, or that they were on steering committees and they received our, uh, 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 you know, like our letter, um, like our email or our telephone call as a steering committee, and now they are organizers of, uh, or, or uh, they, are, they serve on other steering committees. So it is, it is very difficult to say uh, exactly to measure the results, but we can see them. And uh, I can only, I can give a, a one specific example. There's a, the Hot Conference, which is a, a, very, a major social economical conference, and in, uh, it, it didn't, they didn't have any Arab participant in uh, 200, 2012 and 13 we uh, made a good deal and um, we approached them and uh, sent them a list of uh, Arab speakers relevant to the very subject of the conference and thanks to that there were at that time that year 25 Arab speakers uh, speakers of the conference uh, another sad example is that the following year, the following year they didn't have anyone, so it's always, you know, like uh, touch and go, or we cannot sit on, uh, you know, um, sit comfortably okay, and think that the work is done already. We have to keep on going again and again to various uh, conferences. Uh, the, added, the added benefits that we get is that once many times we have uh, realized that people, that organizers do not invite Arab speakers uh, simply because they did not think about it. And once we raised their awareness and we supplied them with a list of uh, 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 potential speakers, which we always say this is not the o these, these are not the only speakers or experts that we, we do not recommend. We just want to show you that there are and that you can go on and find some more on your own. And so it's, uh, we, we managed to create a sort of commitment for change and um, and we see it happening, and we also see that uh, I know that uh, I, from my experience that Arab uh, permanent Arab figures were asked uh, thanks to this project to write in uh, uh, articles in newspapers, and uh, there's uh, now going to be a th uh, several series of meetings, like uh, small conferences, that are uh, a result of our. Uh, uh, efforts in that uh, um, in that uh, field, and also another uh, um, um, proof of our success is that now organizers are approaching us, requesting for assistance to find to locate uh, um, specific uh, con uh, speakers, 
And can you please uh, um, show the, the last final um, slide, obstacles to overcome? Uh, so there are, the obstacles are that, uh, um, as, as I started saying, it, is that, um, the, first of all, the, there's a, in the, a difference of, uh, on the part of commercial bodies. We, we, we can only demand from, from the public sector to do its duty and job and responsibility and have Arab speakers, but usually public uh, organizations or ventures do not, uh, many times they couldn't care less. Um, but we're also trying to raise their um, uh, motivation if, 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 through the financial uh, motivations that it, it's worth their while. Another uh, obstacle that we have to um, that we have is that um, our sources is very are very limited, and uh, so we can only monitor um, some you know very few. We have to decide which conferences we monitor and approach. And uh, we cannot even we, we cannot uh, monitor all the conferences or a various uh, a very wide spectrum of conferences and really judge what difference what change we we create. Another uh, big obstacle, obstacle which we did manage to uh, uh, alleviate it in a way is that uh, we have created a sort of database of speakers. Uh, and in which I uh, contri uh, distribute between uh, um, conference organizers, and I, I will always do it in, uh, specifically to the uh, to the specific uh, conference, so that they can very easily find locate uh, speakers. And if they, they, they do not succeed, they can turn back to me, and I will help them even more. And we are, we are now uh, increasing and um, uh, deepening the database. Uh, it's uh, the Arab source, which is uh, more or less uh, aims to be something like the she source, the American she source. And for that, I shall pass the um, microphone to Bayan, who is more uh, uh, with the relevant person to talk about it. Okay. Thank you, uh, Hasia. I will uh, talk later uh, about the Arab source. Um, good afternoon, and uh, thank you all for being with us uh, today. Um, as Michal said, my name is uh, Bayan Majadle. I'm 28. I grew up uh, at the north of Israel and uh, moved to Tel Aviv at, uh, when I was uh, 19 to study. Uh, I studied at uh, Tel Aviv University Communication and Sociology, and I'm doing my thesis now at Gender Studies at uh, Bar Ilan University. Um, okay, the first slide. Um, we have two research. Uh, the first is from the Alam Center, um, representation of Arab citizens in mainstream written press. Uh, three uh, newspapers, Haaretz, Yediyat Ahronot, and the Ma'ariv. Um, similar data to agendas research from uh, 2010. The findings, it's next slide. Uh, we will begin with the quantity. It's uh, 2.3 Haaretz news items dealt with Arabs, uh, 2.01 of Yediyat Ahronot news items uh, dealt with Arabs, and 1.6 of Ma'ariv news items dealt with the Arabs, and the, the average general percentage was uh, 2.04. And the exposure, which is uh, uh, very uh, important, uh, the page number, uh, we can see that most of the items were in page six and onward. Um, the location in the page, the location of uh, the items, were, most of the items were in the lower half of the page. And the size of the items, only 8% of the items were full page. And it's usually uh, kept for uh, use for uh, sports or security issues. Next slide. Um, the framing. The framing is also very important in the uh, media. Uh, 48 of the items presented Arabs in crime or security context, the most um, items. Um, 41 of the items presented them as victims in the, tra in the tragic context. And 57 of the items showed negative events while 23 of the items showed positive events like successful uh, story. 
Uh, the security context, we can see uh, a, a page from Yediot uh, Aharonot, a newspaper, and the headline George was Sukkot Riot. Uh, Arabs usually um, doing problem, and uh, um, this is about um, and the tragic context. We have uh, a few months ago a bus accident at the north. At, uh, um, Kills eight Bedouin women uh, near Lakia, at the Negev. We see lots of lots of uh, blood and uh, the women at the bus, but no names. I should will will talk about uh, uh, how Arabs uh, in the media. Uh, no names, uh, no pictures. We can see it later. And the positive context, uh, like integration of Arabs into the Israeli high tech. Uh, this is the successful, the success story that we can uh, usually see. In the last years, it's really about uh, almost about uh, high tech and um, and jobs they can uh, reach. Um, next slide: uh, the findings, uh, research con conclusion. Uh, Arab citizens are presented in mainstream Britain Israeli media, usually through security, as we saw, and the criminal context. And the coverage, their coverage is done from the political national perspective rather than a civilian perspective. Usually they are uh, the enemy. Next slide. Uh, research uh, number two, it's uh, the present abstent research from 2011 uh, by the second authority of, for television and radio. Um, representation of Arab citizens in channel two and channel uh, uh, 10, um, prime time shows, and uh, the look at January to June 2011. The sphere examined, we just looked where, where are the Arabs. Uh, in the news show, shows, shows there are uh, uh, four percent. Uh, current events, uh, one percent. Uh, lifestyle, uh, none. Uh, drama production is also none. And the reality uh, was uh, one percent. I think today I'm supposed to be a little bit higher. The reality shows maybe uh, three or four. We always uh, from in th three or four uh, last years we have. All, Always the the Arab uh, and the reality, uh, and the entertainment uh, was none. Uh, in which context were Arabs mentioned? Uh, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, the uh, army, police, and uh, security service, and crime and violence. <laughs> Okay, uh, next slide. Um, the challenge here is to integrate Arab citizens in mainstream Israeli media, press and broadcast, um, in order to, uh, to see them as a civilian, in civilian context, as, as normal, not like a victim or in violence context, and everyday practice. Uh, the possible solution, uh, one of them is to employ uh, Arab reporters uh, directors, members, and professional staff like photographers, editors, and presenters uh, to increase the impress, uh, percentage of the Arab interviews as experts, like uh, uh, Hafia mentioned, rather than just the Arab. Uh, and the online source of Arab experts, we call it the Arab source. Um, and the Arab source, we need it because uh, we can see the Arabs are absent from uh, the Israeli uh, mainstream media. Uh, and again, like Hasya said, uh, people today see uh, the Arabic language, uh, language and the, the Arab peoples appears as, uh, as the enemy language as, and, and the enemy. Um, we just need to raise the awareness. People sometimes, uh, they didn't mean it, they just, uh, we need, uh, uh, we used to see people like us in, in media and uh, in the academy and uh, the work. So we just need to uh, uh, exposure to, to them to the Arab source. Um, 
And I, I think not in the, the, the uh, media sphere. I just think in order to see Arabs as a human, and this is the, the, the main problem that Arabs, uh, as they are not appears like a human today at, at the media. Uh, we must see them at the public sphere and the media, the political, the economic sphere, and only then we can see them as the human. As the, I have a, a, a good example that I, 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 I can see every almost one once a week. Uh, when we have tragedy like a uh, children accident or general uh, tragedy accident, we can see the difference between the coverage uh, when it's an uh, Israeli boy. Uh, we can see that he has dreams always. We can see uh, through the media his mom, friends and family talking about him, what a life he has. Uh, we can always have, have, um, see the picture of the newspaper, uh, his dreams, his name. He always has a name and the dreams. And, and, and we can see his eyes through the picture. And uh, usually when it's an Arab boy or Arab family, it, they just mentioned uh, uh, two boys or two young people died in accident at the north. At the north, it means Arabs, so it's, it's not important. And they have no dreams, no names, they are just numbers, they have no smile, no last picture, uh, no last uh, is conversation with, with, with the mom, with the family. We just... You know, it's he, they're always just a number at statistics. So I think it's 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 the main cha challenge that uh, uh, I want to see uh, uh, um, similar coverage when accidents happen in Israel, when it's it's an uh, Israeli family or a family family. Uh, it's it's my my my, my main. Um, uh, I think it's it will be the ch big challenge for Arab source. Um, to Anu today. Um, thank you. That's it. Thank you, Bayan, and thank you, Hasya. Um, we already have a couple of um, questions coming online. Operator, can you remind those who are on the phone how to submit a question on the phone? Ladies and gentlemen, if you've dialed in and would like to ask a question, press pound one on your phone now. That's the pound sign followed by the number one on your telephone keypad. You'll be placed in the queue in the order received. Just listen for your name to be announced and ask your question when prompted. All participants can send questions using the chat window located on the left of the presentation screen. Just type your message in the rectangular input field and press enter to send it. Thank you. And we have a couple of questions um, uh, over email. Um, Hasia, do you what um, what what are the attitudes from Arab speakers towards actually being participating in national conferences, which will be mainly Jewish? Um, what are the, sorry, what are the attitudes among the, the Arab attitude, speakers? No. Um, how do standing on the, with, in front of a usually Jewish homogenic audience, always speaking in Hebrew? Um, that also put them in, uh, in in a certain position. How? Um, what attitude do you get um, from working with Arab experts? Well, um, um, thank you for the question. Uh, it's uh, um, usually the Arab, the, the Arab. I mean, it's always actually not usually the Arab. The Arab the experts do not work in an Arab environment. They work in the Israeli society. They always they speak like it's like if they are doctors in hospitals or uh, lecturers and researchers at university. They speak Hebrew and they work with uh, Jewish Israeli uh, people all the time. So when they are invited and when they are invited uh, ahead of time, and they are very they are happy to come and speak because it is also important for them to um, to 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 give their own point of view about things sometimes if it's too political uh, like um, sometimes uh, i don't know if it's uh, it's a medical uh, subject or some uh, not medical military subject they would uh, they would be recline, decline 
And uh, there's another problem that we, we I think I've m- I mentioned before about the token Arab that you can see um, because um, there are a, a, set, a limited number of uh, famous uh, Arab uh, people, like, you know, like opinion uh, uh, leaders, like, you know, Ayman Uda, who is the head of the, uh, the joint list, uh, the, the, political, the Arab political party, Ahmed Tipi. And these people are invited so many, so many, to so many conferences that they are uh, fed up, they don't have time, it doesn't get them anywhere. And, and uh, for this reason, we try, we con- try to convince organizers to invite young speakers who can also benefit from it, from the from participation professionally by uh, increasing the uh, networking, getting experience and uh, exposing their knowledge. So it's uh, this, this way to win-win and these people will always come, they will not refuse. Thank you. Um, I have another uh, um, another question um, to you, Bayan. Um, you presented the the result of the survey of the of the of the of the authority for news and um, yeah. uh, for news for television and radio before. So this is a survey conducted by the authority itself. What did they actually? Do you know what they actually did with their findings? Did they Take any steps, or, or, or try to implement any any process. Actually, I, I used to uh, work. I worked for them uh, five years ago at uh, the radio section, and uh, I don't think they have any uh, new solutions or any new things for. Uh, especially for the Arab uh, appearance at uh, uh, this, this channel, this uh, commercial ones. Uh, but, but I think uh, maybe it's also new. They have uh, um, the woman, gender woman, is, uh, uh, for that woman can, should be, appear more, you know, um, and I think they, they can use it also for the, for the Arab source. They should. So you do, you don't you're not aware yeah. that the authority itself has done anything with its findings on with the numbers. No, um, I don't know. Any okay. When I used when I work with them, there were just me and another uh, young woman work there. So I think uh, they should be you know uh, also uh, high uh, hire more uh, Arab workers and. Uh, and also, you know, you to work uh, harder for uh, coverage and uh, uh, present uh, the Arab citizens in the, the, the channels and the, the radio stations. Thank you. And and another question for you um, is regarding Arab labor, Avodaravit, um, the series. Um, being being placed in, in prime time, there was a lot of buzz around it in the Jewish and, and um, the Jewish media and, and Jewish the Jewish society. Um, so, two questions in that regard. One, do you feel that um, there was actually any substantial effect of this series that was presented in prime time on general attitudes or on general attitudes within the media? And the second question is, what was the reaction to it in the Arab media and Arab society um, to the, you know, being the only Arab sitcom in, in prime time television? Um, okay, I think um, it helped that uh, Jewish uh, people see uh, that Arab are uh, they're normal. They have, you know, arguments between. Uh, 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 you know, couples like uh, um, with Amjad and Bushra, the, the characters there, and they have arguments how to raise the children. Um, so, you know, they're normal family, uh, as others, uh, fam- other family in Israel. Um, regards the, um, the uh, Arabic Arab media, uh, it was a, a, a big issue, um, and I think uh, today is less because you know it's 
we're okay we see it and uh, um, it's okay but uh, uh, there were offense because it's um, like uh, the Arab affairs as like um, uh, they have uh, arguments with the with the family and they are like uh, um, they have um, the inside arguments like or you know it, it's it's not okay to 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 show the negative things the negative aspects of the uh, Arab society but I think it's okay it's it's a good way uh, uh, to see things and I think. Uh, the, the, the positive things that we uh, earn from uh, this show is uh, um, much bigger than the negative that, you know, okay, so the Israeli society can see what, what's wrong with the Arab uh, today, but it's, it's okay. I think we have it in, in, every, uh, in every society. It's okay. Thank you. Um, Hasia, can you share... Um examples of where uh, you didn't succeed, where there was a challenge, and what was the source of the resistance, if you can, you know, if you can, if you feel comfortable giving a specific example of, of where it didn't work? Yes, I can. Um, yeah, there are, uh, you know, uh, the big newspapers like Haaretz and Globes, which is, uh, I think, I don't know if, uh, I suppose that people know about them, have a, a conference uh, um, department, and although they are uh, private, uh, we, we um, uh, enterprises, we try to convince them to have uh, um, Arab participants because uh, first of all they publicize it a lot, so it is seen by many people, and it's, uh, although they sometimes they only give the like um, the they host the conference. But the, afterwards, they also um, they write a lot, a lot about it, and it, it is conce conceived as uh, the newspaper's agenda. So we try to convince them, and many times they refuse because I mean because as I said before, they couldn't care less. Or we have professional uh, like professional uh, private uh, conferences of. Uh, um, like uh, engineers and stuff like that, and they really they they, they don't want to do anything about it. They, many times they say it's uh, it's too late. It's uh, we don't know the person. There is one of a major uh, research institute in Israel whom I met with the uh, the, the president of, and he said, you know, the Arab speakers are not uh, good enough. And I said, you know, I will just I will not write anything about it, provided that the next. Uh, conference, you will have Arab speakers, and in, in, in the, the bias is so deep because in his, in, in the institute which he manages or chairs, there are Arab, prominent Arab researchers, but somehow so it's the, the, the bias or the fear of what they will speak about is too great. But when, since we go public with it and we write posts and we publish it in, in newspapers, many times they cannot, um, I mean, lately they cannot refuse. And of course, it's, it's not that they cannot refuse. They can always say, I didn't find the right person, he didn't answer me, I sent him. You know, like there was, there was a call for lectures. Um, they didn't, uh, they didn't uh, answer back, they didn't uh, uh, submit any call, any uh, proposal. And one of the things that we're trying to change in order to change it is to have Arabs also on the steering committees. And we said that, if, uh, first of all, it will broaden your perspective. And then speakers or uh, people who are uh, supposed to, uh, to write, to uh, submit uh, proposals, when they see that there are Arabs, uh, uh, Arab members of the steering committees, it will increase their belief that they have a chance. So... I hope I answered the question. Yes, thank you. Um, can you speak a little bit about the ch whether the challenge, if the challenge has changed, um, what it is today as opposed to what it was five years ago or four years ago? Has it changed? Is it is it similar? Well, um, it is changing for the better. Although it it can be sometimes more difficult because uh, uh, the there's more legit legitimacy to um, to shun Arabs from the public from public life. 
but uh, since we are really raising, we're, uh, I mean, our resources are very, very limited. We only, it's like we have, I have one day a week and uh, there's, a, you know, only that, so much work that we can do. But since we, uh, the method that we use is like uh, writing also to steal, stealing committees, etc., I can definitely see a change. I can see like there is a very big medical convention uh, next week, I think. Last year, it, there was, a, I mean, I really fought with the organizer who was very vehement against adding an Arab speaker. And then we, uh, I pulled some strings and we, the last minute he, he invited uh, one Arab speaker. And now this year, without our, our uh, even asking or even approaching him, he included two prominent Arab speakers who are, it's true that, I mean, they are ours, but they, are, they were invited uh, thanks to the, or because of their professional capacities. But there is, we definitely see a change. Okay, I think, um, I think this is our last um, question. Um, I will um, We'll conclude and thank um, both Bayan and Hasia for their very thorough presentations. If there are any follow-up questions, you're welcome to email us and we'll forward them to them. This call also has been recorded and can be found on our website as well as our two previous calls on, um, on Arabs in the public sector and Arabic language and the proficiency of Hebrew in, in Arab schools. Um, our next call, which we will send uh, an invitation to, will focus on the study of Arabic in in, uh, in the Jewish education system. Uh, so please uh, please watch out for that invitation. Hasia Bayan, thank you so much for joining us today, thank you. Um, and we look forward to continuing the conversation. Thank you, and you're very welcome. Thank you. This concludes today's interagency Inter task force on Israeli Arab issues webinar. Thank you all for attending.